Have you ever had a really bad hair day? With your art, not like you personally. I, I don't even have hair. I did last week because I was playing around in the new Etcher Labs Perfect Sketchbook during a live. Everything was going fine at first. I felt I really had a good shape to the hair and it flowed nicely. I mean, I love painting hair. It's quite possibly my favorite thing to paint. My hair is deeply inspired by the Art Nouveau movement, especially Alphonse Mucha's work. And I love giving my subject hair that seems alive. And a lot of times it comes easy. And sometimes I really need to work hard to get it right. And last week, the hair just didn't want to play nicely. My photo reference had this lovely afro textured hair. And while I took artistic liberties to have it flow onto the next page, I wanted to try and capture the texture properly. My first instinct was to try and add some squiggly lines with colored pencils on top of the gouache. I'd had some luck with this over watercolors and I was thinking three different colors, slate gray, lavender, and peacock blue. In my mind, it would have been kind of cool. You know, artsy. It wasn't, it wasn't cool at all. I immediately regretted that decision and painted over it as quick as I could. Okay, what if I just use the slate gray colored pencil? I figure it's worth one more shot just, just to see if it'll work. Mm -mm. Nope, 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 hard pass. So here's where I start throwing the kitchen sink at the hair. I know something will work, but I don't know what yet. I've done Afro textured hair many times, so I have a few techniques that I've done in the past that I really like, but not every technique works every time. I just kind of have to play around a bit and see what clicks. This technique is kind of a stippling with gouache and it could work. If you look at the hair from the photo reference, it could either be squiggly lines or dots. It's really up to the interpretation of the artist. And honestly, sometimes one works and other times the other. I have no idea why. Maybe it's a mood thing or maybe it's a muse or fate or just sometimes the art wants to be what the art wants to be and we just do our best to oblige. I will sometimes do this over and over and over again for days because I know something somehow will click. But as I was doing this live, I tried to keep the hunt for the perfect hair texture down to a modest 90 minutes. This one just wasn't it, but I may come back to it again later. Artex acrylic markers are really wonderful. They work like an alcohol marker, but they put out a vibrant and opaque acrylic paint that can go on top of anything. I don't know why, but I thought maybe I should try the squiggles again. I don't know what I was thinking. I just, I just had a thought and went for it. I'm using acrylic gouache here for the black, in case you were wondering. It dries permanent, like acrylic, but it's a nice matte texture, like gouache. It's great for indecisive artists who need to cover up every material in their hobbit hole. Okay, we've tried acrylic marker squiggles, how about acrylic marker stippling? Surely that's the one that's, no, no, I, I hate it. <sighs> Oh boy, getting desperate now. What if I use the hair technique I did for the centaur? It's not afro textured, wavy really, but it was cool with the cobalt blue on top of the black, right? I love this technique. The blue really pops and it has a nice comic book kind of feel to it. Yeah, this this may work. It might just be, no. No, it's, it, it really needs to be afro texture. I, I don't know why, but it does. At this point, I've been boring everyone on the live for an hour with this trial and error, and I feel horrible. This isn't fun for me, and it can't be very fun for the people watching. So I start throwing squiggles and stippling and blue and purple and just kind of rage painting, I guess. I start defining individual strings of hair with the black. I look for shapes. I'm imagining where the light and shadow might be. Nothing is working. I keep layering and layering paint on top of paint, hoping something, anything will jump out at me and say, this, this is it, but nothing happens. And the live is almost over and I hate disappointing everyone like this. And then suddenly, finally, I see it. This, this spot right here. Something about the purples on top of the blacks and the blues on top of the purples, that's the look. It's artsy, it's colorful, and it has that Afro texture that feels authentic. And, and this is just, this was actually just me showing everybody in the live that I finally found it. I was so excited. At this point, I only had about 10 minutes left in the live, so I just kind of filled the area out a bit and then signed off. But a couple days later for the next live, I started up again with new energy and I was really excited to finish the hair. And this, this part here for me is magical. I went over the black with a beautiful purple and at first you can't really see the purple. It's still wet and the mixture of water and gouache makes the purple seemingly blend in with the black. But watch this, this is so cool. As the water evaporates from the gouache and the paint dries and sits on top of the black, you can see this wonderful purple texture appear seemingly out of nowhere. See that? Isn't that so cool? It's not as impressive in real time, of course, but knowing what it will look like, you just have to kind of go for it and trust the process, which I did. Now I just bring out the highlights with the cobalt blue. It's the same blue I used for the centaur and it just glows when it dries. It's so pretty. This process took me about 15 to 20 minutes, but it was so satisfying. And the rest of the painting was 
pretty much uneventful. Not a single problem. This was just supposed to be a sketch in a sketchbook, by the way. Just a fun little doodle, really. But that hair took me a full 90 minutes to figure out. An entire life. But in a way, I'm kind of glad that everyone got a chance to see me work through it. Art isn't easy. It's not formulaic. It's a lot of trial and error. A lot of doing things by feeling or instinct. But because I've painted so many different types of hair over the years, I knew I had an arsenal of techniques I could throw at it, and hopefully one of them worked. Though I think this one was a bit of dumb luck more than a tried and true technique, but I'll take the win. This, my friends, this is what sketchbooks are for. To experiment, to sort out problems, to fail, a lot and hopefully learn and grow as an artist. So don't be afraid to get your hands dirty, to throw the kitchen sink at a sketch, mess up. And if you don't like where it's going, just turn the page and try again. Hey, it's just paper and paint. We learn more from our failures than we do our victories. Don't forget that. Now go fill up that sketchbook and have some fun.